In this video, I'm going to share with you a really simple little way to attack the underneath of the most meta defenses in Madden 21. What's going on guys? My name is Cody and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel focuses in on helping people become the best Madden players they can possibly become. And so if you are looking to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies right here on the YouTube page. Now, if you're new to the channel or if you've been watching for a little bit, maybe you've missed some content, uh, what we've been doing over the course of the last couple of weeks and really what we're going to be doing on the channel for the next 10 days before Madden 22 launches is preparing for Madden 22 as best as we possibly can. The best way that I know how to prepare people for our new game is to go over concepts that have worked for years. Concepts I ran in Madden 12 and Madden 13 and Madden uh, 25. Concepts that I really um, have come to believe they will always work no matter what year of Madden you play. And what we've done is we've actually detailed that in our first ever um, route concept encyclopedia. And what it's meant to be is it's meant to be a dictionary, a glossary, an encyclopedia of sorts where you can look up how you can actually put together route concepts, okay? A concept could actually only be two receivers. It could also be five receivers. Concepts don't necessarily have to be a play. And so if you understand the concepts or the principles, the methods are gonna take care of themselves, right? So you can take um, the curl flat concept, for example, and apply that to several different um, several different reads and, and, and progressions in your playbook. So what this is really meant to do is really to be a detail-oriented guide for you that you can use to say, okay, I want to learn some compression concepts that I can apply to bunch or to tight doubles. We've got that in there. Or I want to learn some short side cover three beaters. We've got that in there. Or wide side cover three beaters. Or uh, maybe you want to learn Maybe you want to learn like how you can run two by two spread concepts. So we have concepts for the short side two wide receivers and the concepts for the wide side two wide receivers. So it's really a great resource so far. People have been really enjoying it and giving me great feedback on it. And for those of you that have gotten it or are thinking about getting it, just know that this is a one-time purchase of $15. So you don't have to, there's no membership required or anything. And it is going to continue to update. As I learn new route concepts, as I learn new material, we're going to embed that into the guide for you. So it's going to be a great resource for you going forward. So if you want to get that, that's in the description. Um, and really, it's kind of something that's really been something um, that I've been coming back to as I've been building this empty tray stack scheme. And the reason why is because the empty tray stack is basically... Uh, three wide receivers on the right and two wide receivers on the left but those two wide receivers can either be stacked or we can motion them and create either two wide receiver spread or we can run two wide receiver compression concepts so that's why i really like and have enjoyed this play or this this uh this guide so if you want to get it it's down in the description but in this video what we're going to talk about today is this play fade out this is probably the most versatile play in the playbook and we're going to show this to you um, as it pertains to quick passing okay this is all about quick passing because if you're going to run five wide you have to have tools in your tool belt to be able to beat pressure you also have to have that same exact concept be able to beat max coverage so you want to be able to beat pressure and max coverage in the same concept and we're going to show you how to do that right now so what we're going to do is we're just going to set up kind of a basic mabel coverage to start out with because i think that's where we need to start and the first thing is um, we've got really simple adjustments. Uh, what I like about this is this is a very vertical style uh, passing concept. And uh, what you're going to see is we're going to actually go ahead and we're going to motion uh, the R1 receiver to the inside here. And we're going to actually put him on a streak route just like this. And then the circle receiver, you can do one of two things. You could either put him on a dig route, like a five yard in route, or you could put him on a drag. Personally, um, because of the, the timing and all of that, I really like the drag because he's coming all the way across. I want him to be able to get into my sight if there is pressure, um, but there are reasons why you would, might not want to do that. First read on this play is a square receiver always. He's going to take a little inside jab cut to the inside, and if the linebacker on the left side is not in a vertical hook, you can throw this ball every single time. And what you're gonna see is if they blitz you, this is one of my favorite 
I mean, this is my favorite play against the Blitz. Uh, and, and here's why. This route to square is so good. You're just going to snap, throw it inside, and you're going to get probably 20 yards if they blitz you. If they don't blitz you, you're going to get 5 to 10 yards um, if they're playing some kind of Mabel concept. Let me show you another adjustment that you might see from time to time, and that is a vertical hook on this guy. What you'll see is if you see that vertical hook, all you got to do is just wait on the route, and as you see, we're able to beat the, beat the blitz or beat the... Uh, beat the base coverage. So if you see a vertical hook in that side of the field, um, what you're going to see is he's just going to back up into that little little section of, of grass. Um, one way that you can get around a vertical hook real quick is that you can basically uh, motion this guy in and kind of get it like underneath just like that. Now again, you saw David did jump really well there. Um, but if you had Gunslinger, it would be a little bit easier of a route. So let me show you vertical hook. And let me put the defensive end on that side in a vertical hook just to give you a really good picture of this. What you'll see here, and I guess you can't quite snap throw it, but you can fit it in, in between the two, the two zones. Um, another thing that you can do with this concept, and this is why this out route is so daggone effective, if they're running a lot of that vertical hook there, trying to take away the snap throw, a really easy way around that is just take this square receiver um, so you're just going to streak the triangle receiver and then you're going to motion this guy out and kind of snap while he's in motion and you see that it gets him away from all the zone coverage. So I really like that read as well. It's also very good against man. We'll show you real quick against man to man. Um, if you get something like a press man coverage, what I like about this against press man is you're still going to have this, this kind of snap throw, especially if you motion him in. So if you get like... Especially if you get press man, let me show you what press man looks like. Off man is not going to be the same, but if you get press man and you just take triangle and put him on a like a fade or something, he's going to pull both of those guys. And oftentimes you can kind of snap throw that. Um, you could even put him on a corner route or something. But the other thing, the more consistent way to beat man coverage with this, um, is to just simply wait for him to cut to the outside. So when he cuts outside, you see you're going to get pretty consistent separation. As long as you don't have an absolute dud at receiver you're going to be fine. And, and if you're in mutt, you can put short um, short out elite on him and he's going to be fine. Now, if they run this, that second setup that I told you about, if they're off coverage, it doesn't matter. You're still going to be able to beat man just like that every time for about 15 yards. Okay. So that route's a pain in the freaking butt to defend. It really is. If they're going to blitz you, um, what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to do something like this. And they're going to really have to jet out and go get this guy. So the way they're going to do that is, and I'm just going to illustrate that by manning him up on him. So then that comes back to this opposite side here. And when you have a streak and a post, um, like we do right here, and a drag coming underneath it, um, this is an old, oldie but goodie concept, one of my favorites in the game. I want you to watch what happens to this right side of the field. What you're going to see is this drag is going to get underneath every single zone in the game. Now, you don't have to motion in that R1. And, uh, and honestly, the more I'm thinking about it as I'm talking, you might not want to. Um, there are cer certain coverages. It's better if they're, if, they're, if they're not blitzing you, it's better to not or better to motion him in. But if they are blitzing you, it's actually better to leave him out. And the reason why is because that seam flat zone will really climb vertical with this with this, um, with this this guy. So watch what happens here. You see he climbs vertical. He doesn't have a chance at stopping the drag. Now the dig route is different. Let me show you a five yard dig route. And this is where, you know, kind of the debate, you know, should you drag people or in, or in route people? I think in routes are better against man, but against, um, against you know, consistency, um, what you'll see here is with something like this, because I've got that seam flat zone really going vertical, and I've got I've got that all that together. I want you to watch the five yard dig here. So um, what you'll see is he'll kind of come in a little bit more. He doesn't play it, but he does come in a little bit more. And the reason why is because it's a vertical route. Seam flats, especially when they're zone dropped, they do a really good job of playing vertical routes. Routes like in routes, out routes, and slant routes. Okay, that's why I don't slant him, that's why I don't end him, that's why I drag him. Now, let's say you're getting, um, let's say you're getting a coverage like that where they're using curl flat zones. Um, and we talk a lot about this in our defensive encyclopedia where we break down every zone in the game. What you're gonna see here is, he's it's kind of similar, but kind of not. 
the seam flat's going to be the best zone they can run. Um, if they run a, a yellow out there, let me just show you what that looks like, just so you can get a full picture of the defense of what you're facing if they do blitz you. The yellow zone is going to get really pulled vertical. As you see here, he gets really pulled vertical, and I can hit that drag every single time. So really the core of this is these two vertical routes are going to really pull the zones back and allow me to have a lot of space to be able to hit um, to be able to hit this underneath route. Now, let me show you uh, what it looks like if they have, you know, kind of standard drop, uh, coverage. Same thing. The yellows, they they don't they don't sit underneath. They really get pulled vertically, uh, which is what we want to have happen. And so, what it's going to force your opponent to do is it's going to force your opponent to go to man-to-man -to -man coverage. The problem with man-to-man -man coverage, as it pertains to this specific concept, you'll see here that circle oftentimes will be fine. Um, if you start to get more man-to-man -man coverage, I would recommend either a slant route or a dig. Um, if you start to notice, and you see here, I mean, if they go man, it's pretty obvious. They, they line up right over the man. Um, but you see right here the dig being a little bit better as like a rack catch type thing. This is also assuming that their user is going to sit over here on the square receiver. Okay, so it's, you know, that's the idea here. And then again, if you have a good tight end, which I don't have a great tight end in this video, um, Gronk's good, but he's not, for Madden purposes, he's not the best route runner. But what you'll see is if you do have a good one, he can split those safeties. Um, he can split those safeties on the cut. One thing you can do to kind of help his route out a little bit and kind of help the play out a little bit is you can smart route him. You'll see it'll get him to go a lot more vertical. He gets up vertical, then he makes that cut to the inside, and you see I can throw it just like that. So the reason I'm saying that is that gives you three reads against man if you do need it. And then, you know, obviously, um, if, they're, if they're shading underneath man coverage on you, this R1 receiver, um, this is where, you know, the one thing is you don't have this fade to ground to kind of pull him out of the way. But if you watch this R1 receiver, if I pass lead this to the inside, you see he gets over the top of that shaded down man because they can't press him on this play. So that's another little thing, another little tactic that you can use. And then, you know, one little pro tip that you can do out of this if you want um, is you can take the R1 receiver and you can actually snap him in motion. So you set the play up and then you're just gonna snap it as soon as he moves. Just like that, I snap him. What you'll see that it does to, it's mainly what it does to man coverage. It's again, it's kind of a man specific thing, but it's really good against shaded down man. So if you get a shaded down man look and they're using their safeties back, this is a great way to attack it. So all I'm gonna do is just motion him in just like this. And then you see here, he completely roasts that man coverage. And so all I got to do is just throw it up, up the seam just like that. Now, obviously, if they're using over the middle, then that's going to force them to have to go back to that. And it's going to open up your two underneath reads. If they shade coverage, uh, I want to show that really quickly here. So let's say that they're shading their coverage um, up or, you know, down and up or whatever, over top coverage, basically. Um, you're going to see here this R1 route is not going to get open. But pretty much every other route is... If you take the triangle receiver, the one thing I don't, I don't love this wheel route, and you can change it if you want to. Um, you know, you can change this 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 wheel route to whatever you really want. Um, I would rather, honestly, like a corner route or a fade route. Um, and the reason why is just because the corner route is going to serve that serve the same purpose, but it gives you another read against man. Um, it also helps with like a cover three bomb when you use this motion here. Uh, the X receiver is going to get opening in cover three if you have a corner route over there. So that's something you can do. Um, you could just simply put him on a flat route if you wanted to. Um, a hitch route. I like a hitch route as well. Um, you know, there's so many things you can do. The reason I like the hitch route so much is, against zone, it's really, really good. But it also, if they're shading, if you shade up in man coverage, you'll see this hitch really does a good job at getting open as well. You know, so there's some things you can do like that to really help this uh, this play be able to beat every coverage in the game and it does beat every coverage consistently I mean you will beat every single coverage with this um, And I absolutely love this square receiver. They're gonna have to use her 
you know, my, my thing is they're going to have to use her the square receiver. So then what we can do, like I said, this is where the drag comes in. This is where this motion snap comes in. And now if they're shading up in man, they're usering over on that left side. And now that drag route will never get covered and shaded up man. If they play over top man coverage, that drag route will always be open. The only way to stop a drag route in this year's game, at least in my opinion, is to either play Mabel coverage and use her in the middle of the field and to kind of push that drag to the Mabel or to play press man to man. And they can't play press man to man because what we just showed you with the other receivers on the play. So anyways, that is the, the fade out as more of an underneath style uh, passing attack. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you want to, um, if you want to get if you want to learn kind of some of the concepts and some of these concepts as we're preparing for Madden 22, I would really recommend you get my route concept encyclopedia. Like I said, it's it's meant to be something that's good beyond just Madden 22. So it's meant to be good for Madden 23 and Madden 24 and on and on because these are concepts and they're concepts that you can not only apply to bunch. It's not a gun bunch ebook. It's not a gun spread ebook. It's a guide or encyclopedia of concepts that you can use that are going to work in the gun bunch but they're also going to work in the trips tight end and they're also going to work in the single back ace and they're also going to work in the iform pro they're concepts that you can apply to any offense in the game that's why i did it uh, as our training camp guide because i think it's so vital to your success as a quarterback if you want to get better as a passer this is probably the best thing that you can do for your offense. Thanks for your watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you want to get the guide, I've left a link down in the description for you to be able to get it. It's just a one-time purchase of 15 bucks. Helps support the channel a ton, and it allows you to be able to get better as a Madden player. Thanks for your time. And if you want to get that ebook, it is down in the description.